Hello everyone, we are continuing with our Created series and this sermon is entitled Created for Rest. Our scripture reading comes from Genesis chapter 2 verses 1 through 3 which says, And so the heavens and the earth were completed in all their heavenly lights. By the seventh day God completed his work which he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because on it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Well, we are celebrating Father's Day and graduations and scholarships this Sunday at church. It's going to be very, very busy. And so, kind of strange to be talking about rest. But if we look at this, after six days of creation, God looked on his work and he pronounced that it was very good. But it wasn't until the seventh day that God called something holy. The day of rest is, or the Sabbath, is attributed with holiness, which is the essence of God's character. You know, and I think today many people think of rest as something that they have to do so that they can actually work, or given the choice, some people would prefer bodies that didn't rest at all. <laughs> I think in our modern society, rest is often seen as the opposite of productivity. Um, it may even be looked at as a functional necessity serving the higher end of work, devoid of a higher meaning or a higher significance. But I don't think this view of rest is biblically accurate. In Genesis chapter 2, God both works and rests. And God in his omnipotence clearly does not need to rest due to physical tiredness or being exhausted. He doesn't need to rest so that he can become more productive, given that he's already created everything. So there's clearly something more to rest than maintaining energy for the production line. And it's in the second chapter of Genesis that God established a garden in Eden and he actually put order in this paradise. Within the garden he put a caretaker, Adam and Eve, caretakers we could say, who were responsible for the work. But the garden itself represents God's rest and humanity at our beginning was at rest with God. And that rest is not necessarily relaxation. Adam had a job to do in the garden and so did Eve, but when they were in God's presence, when they were in the garden where all was ordered and at peace, that was where their souls, their hearts, even their physical bodies found rest. They were experiencing God's rest. But as we know, in the third chapter of Genesis, Adam and Eve rebelled against God and they were cast from the garden and the rest was over. And now the labor will be hard. The orderliness of the garden was replaced with a world that required much effort for survival. It was a world of disorder. And God's rest is now only a distant memory for which we struggle trying to bring to the forefront of our minds. You know, I think our society is so bent on being busy and work, 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 work. And, and we have to work. We know that. We were created for work. But, you know, we almost feel guilty when we take time. When we take time to rejuvenate our, ourselves, when we rejuvenate our souls. I recently just took a couple of days to visit my matriarch of the family, um, my aunt who has uh, just turned 80, and I had to sign some papers and go down the Cape and I I took a couple days with my granddaughter still worked with my computer but it was restful for my soul to be near the ocean so we really put so much in our culture on on having to work 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 you know even in our advertising you may have heard um, an advertisement for a fast food place or, or um, delivery food place that promises to bring you your food in under a minute or you get a free drink or you get a free burger. I think McDonald's ran one years ago and, and I think from time to time other chains do as well. Food in a minute. <laughs> Much of the ads seen and heard are made to save us time and money. And at the same time many of us are burned out, we're depressed, we're restless. 
it doesn't seem like it's helping at all. Some of us would say that we're too busy to rest. You know, I would say that at times. But apparently our time-saving products are not working. <laughs> Is that because we are lacking rest? Not time? Mm, I think so. How much of our time is wasted doing things that don't provide rest for us? I think what we need is uh, not a new time-saving idea, but so uh, we need the ability, we need the, um, the okay from society, I guess, or from our own heart. So we need to look at the biblical ways for us to find rest, rest that we can only get from God. I think that's what we need. And I'm here to tell you what was lost in Eden can be found in Jesus because it is in him that we can find rest. But we have this skewed view, don't we, of rest. I often see this quest for rest in two ways. We can say, what is the guy that plays video games, or the girl will say, for video games for 14 hours have in common with the woman or the man who works nonstop. Maybe she's working nonstop to keep her house spotless and maybe the man and the woman are working nonstop at their job. Both are looking for true rest. The guy that's wasting away playing video games is trying to find rest in his inactivity, trying to find something to fulfill him when they're inactive, while the woman is trying to find it in her busy activity. Neither will end the day truly satisfied because our satisfaction only comes from God. And it's there where we must look to see how we can find true rest. Jesus tells us how. He tells us in Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. He said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. His burden is light. His burden is peace. His burden is what provides us with rest for our souls. Jesus, he often took time to rest and to pray. And as our scripture stated today on the seventh day, God, the triune God, rested. He rested not because he was tired. And I don't think we should equate his resting with laziness or inactivity. God's rest is his invitation into a time of enjoyment with him. God created us to enjoy him. He created us to enjoy his good creation. And part of our rest means that we must take the time to be with him. I think our sin has caused this distortion that we have of rest. We we either live restless lives fueled by sinful ambition and constant work, or we withdraw into laziness. Neither of them provide us with a joy-fueled rest that God intended for us. We end up as one described by Solomon in Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. There is an evil that I have seen under the sun, and it lies heavy on mankind. A man to whom God gives wealth, possessions, and honor, so that he lacks nothing of all that he desires. Yet God does not give him power to enjoy them, but a stranger enjoys them. This is vanity. It is a grievous evil. Vanity again. <laughs> we have the stuff we desire, but we're unable to find satisfaction in it. Vanity. We cannot enjoy what we have because we haven't discovered lasting joy in God. Vanity. Jesus is the one who gives us true rest when we have a relationship with him. In Hebrews chapter 4, we see encouragement for us to rest. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 states, Therefore, while the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us fear lest any of you should seem to have failed to reach it. The ancient Israelites, according to Hebrews, failed to take up God on his offer of rest because they are disobedient to him. Let us fear lest we fail to reach it. How many of us are failing to reach it? But as followers of Jesus, we received good news about the rest God promised from the beginning 
Because of Jesus and his sacrifice, believers are able to accept God's offer of rest regardless of who they are or where they live. So let's continue in Hebrews chapter 4, this time looking at verses 9 through 11. So then, there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest has also rested from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of disobedience. These scriptures, they convey a deeper significance to the meaning of rest. It's communicated by this word Sabbath, the notion of Sabbath. Rest is much more than recuperating from a hectic and tiring week. It's, it's actually the affirmation of a special relationship that we have with God. That's what we're striving for. Rest is a privilege grace, graciously extended by a God who desires his creation to be delighted in the refreshment that he enjoys. He wants us to be delighted in him. The Sabbath is holy because it's a day that belongs to God and he graciously chooses to share himself with his creation and that includes us. He's a generous God who delights in his people. Proverbs 8 verses 30 and 31 states just that. It reads, then I was beside him like a master workman and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world and delighting in the children of man. Rest is the gracious gift of God's desire to be intimate, um, to have a joyful relationship with humanity and his creation. He wants you to take the time to be beside him. He likes your company. Is it really so hard to take a day for the Lord? To take an hour or so to rest in him? God sanctifies the seventh day in creation to set it apart from the other days as a day of rest, to just be with him. God rests so his people can partake in his refreshment and his rest from work fosters his relationship with his people. In the first two chapters of Genesis, we see that God both works and rests. We have him as a model. God creates people with a job in mind, a responsibility over creation. And the fact that people are created in God's image and the immensity of the task that he entrusts to us prove that God intends his people to be workers. But also, he intends his people to be resters after the pattern he models on the seventh day. God's dual invitations to work and rest serve as a validation of that special bond God has between humanity and his creation. So on this weekend or this Sunday, whenever you're watching this on this Father day, Father's Day, let us acknowledge the rest from our Father in heaven and rest as his people. We can enjoy our family time on earth as it is in heaven. Let us pray. Father, we are so grateful for the opportunity to work for you and the opportunity to be able to enjoy our rest in you. May you work on the hearts of those who find it difficult to stop and take some time to fill their heart with your creation and your word. Help us to be better resters. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go in peace.